Welcome to the painting, painting the Sri Yantra, sometimes known as painting the Sri Chakra. It's a series of chakras, colored wheels that we're going to define. I wanted to start the video greeting you, hi, and also to let you know there's different ways of coloring or painting the Sri Yantra. It's not just one. So two of the ways that I have been taught, one is by Sri Harish Johari, and some of you might have his book. It's a great book if you don't have it, Tools for Tantra. And he liked to use these colors. So the colors we're gonna to do today in the video is gonna be based on this. All the very primary colors to resonate with the chakras. And it's a really great way of seeing the circuits. The circuits in the Sri Yantra are really what we meditate on when we gaze at the completed Yantra. So I want you to learn about the circuits as we go through and we'll paint together, we'll mix the colors together. And I also have two others, a different version of the Yantra. But again, just to show you the colors. This one is also in the deeper primary colors that Harish Johari taught. And then this is something that Sri Amritananda Saraswati taught me from Devi Puram. Actually, he sent me writings on the colors of the Yantra. And these were from the Tantras. There are different Tantras, bodies of knowledge, scriptures, talking about the colors in the Sri Yantra and why the different circuits are created. And so he never showed me a completed one with the colors, but he showed me these writings. And a lot of the colors are describing flowers. Some of these flowers we don't have in the West. So some of them I researched and some of them kind of imagined what they could be. So this is a whole different kind of feeling, right? It's a little more delicate. It's got a lot of these greens and reds and pinks. And so sometimes we go in this spectrum and, and most often I actually like to do it in the deeper colors because it reminds me of the circuit so much, like the blue circuit, the red circuit. But you start to get the concentric feeling towards the center of the yantra. You know, like a pebble dropped at the bindu, the bindu is right there center and then it ripples out into these circuits or the chakras. This is why it's called the Sri Chakra. So the outline I did before uh, from one of the many Sri Yantra videos that we've been doing together. So this is what I'm going to be painting on and I'm going to start at the outside and work my way in. So the outer circuit, the ninth circuit you could say, and work my way into the center. And I'll be using gouache paints. I like to work with gouache. Gouache is a medium that just needs water added to it. And if it dries, you can also bring it back to life, reconstitute it. Unlike acrylic, when that dries, it's like plastic, right? You can't bring it back. So that's one reason I like to use gouache. Another reason is that it just sits nice and flat and it I mean, honestly, it covers mistakes that you may have made before. I like to have these crisp lines in my yantras and the opaqueness of the paint allows me to cover over any errors I may have made. Now, those of you who are not hyper perfectionist about the geometric yantras as I am, you might enjoy doing watercolor where you get to see the transparency. So that's a whole different feeling and maybe something to explore. And something like oil paint, you could use it on a big canvas if you're standing back from it and your hand isn't gonna smudge it. That could make vibrant colors. Traditionally, people used, they ground up gemstone powders and use those in yantras because they also have a vibration. You can really use anything you like to color. Coloring pencils are fine. Any kind of paint is fine. But as we go through this painting the Sri Yantra video, I will be using gouache. People often ask me, what are you using? So enjoy. 
I'm sure you're ready to paint your yantra because I know a lot of you have been doing well with your drawing. Let me know how you get on. The outline for the Sri Yantra is going to be gold. So I'm going to mix, I just put a little paint in my container, my palette, a little imitation gold. And I'll mix this with just with water. Shri, Shri, Shri. This is so exciting. We are about to embark upon a Shri Yantra. So the first thing we do is make a nice gold, just with water. I might put a little sample on some paper, see how it looks. And before we do anything, there's one nice mantra we can do together. I'm Reem Shreem Shreem Namaha I'm Reem Shreem Shreem Namaha All right, we're ready to begin now. Shri Matre Namaha, we've got the gold. I'm gonna do a little time-lapse painting. I'll do a little bit slowly so you can see how I'm painting and then I'll speed it up and you can see how it goes. So we're gonna start at the top and I want to see really well for this outline and it'll be a medium, a medium small, not the tiniest small, the actual tiniest small we will wait and save for the triangles. So I'm at the top and I'm going to start around here and let's see how it goes, shall we? We'll go all the way up to the edge slowly. So I start a little bit away from the edge and then just very slowly I go up to the edge. If I start at the edge straight away, I might go over and might kind of splodge. So I'm Reem Shreem Shreem Namaha See how it's going to come together with this great gold outline. So I've got my gold done, and before I do the yellow, sometimes I'll go into the corners like this with a little piece of eraser and make sure things are not going to come through. You know, yellow is very transparent, even with the gouache. So you don't want too many dark markings underneath. All right. I am going to start mixing the yellow. So the yellow for the Sri Yantra is going to be a kind of a mid yellow. I might start with a little of this primary yellow today. And add a little bit of the cadmium yellow. It's, it's a mid yellow. It's not dark, it's not 
it's not super lemon it's a mid yellow color and then a little white get my little scrap paper again so the Sri Yantra the whole universe is in this Yantra it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be great all right so get my mixing brush for this yellow It's a nice vibrant yellow. It's a little buttercupish. Even that, I might add just a tiny bit more white. Just so it covers. Yeah, almost none, just enough. Often you have to wait until the paint's actually dry before you see the color you're gonna get. I like it, I'm gonna go with it. So now we'll go around again. I'll blot the excess paint with this paper towel. So I'm gonna go back to my original paintbrush. Got this nice yellow color. And let's see how it looks. Before I go time lapse on you, let's see how it's gonna look. I like to have this piece of paper here for my hand because you never know if your hand is going to smudge the pencil or even be have grease on it. So here's the yellow. Same thing, don't start too near the gold. You wanna work up to the gold. And you, you, I guess the goal is to just, just go over any pencil lines. We'll go up to them. And once you have your golden yellow nicely done, then we're looking for the green. The next color is a primary green, a little bit of a deeper, deeper than primary, primary green. I will take my permanent middle green. I might as well use this green tray it's been green before it looks like so this is for the bupur the bupur is the background and you know we like to think about the opposite colors so if it's green we think about red so it's a nice deep feeling for the bupur here the background the green is nice for the heart and then the red which is the opposite color it's good for your grounding, so like the earth of the yantra. 
So it's a little viridian green. Sometimes that gives it a nice quality. My viridian green looks a little bit flaky. And sometimes I add a little bit of lemon yellow to give it a, a brighter feeling. So here's some options. Lemon yellow, permanent green, middle, it's not too light, right? Middle, and I'll have a little white there. Let's see how it's gonna mix in everything. So I'm doing this yantra right now because I've drawn a lot of Sri yantras lately and I haven't actually been coloring them, painting them. And painting is important. Painting is feeling the vibration of color within the shapes of the yantra. Also the process of painting is so soothing. So it's nice to draw the yantras, it's also nice to paint them. So today is a painting day. I feel like it'll help the essence of the yantra sink into my being a bit more. I was feeling I needed some clarity about a couple of questions I had. So it's always a good idea to make the Sri Yantra if you have questions. It's like you're asking the universe, how are things gonna line up? How, how are things meant to go right now? It's amazing. I'm sure I'll get a lot of good answers by the time I'm done with this yantra with you. Let's see. So the Sri, Sri relates to the goddess Tripura Sundari. And Tripura Sundari, her planet is Mercury. So Mercury is green. So that's another reason in the mix why we have a nice green here. Something about green is you really do have to have a little bit of white in it. Otherwise, it gets streaky. So I'm wondering how that's going to dry. So I get my true color. I'm feeling this green today, this uh, yellow with the green. I'm gonna let that dry. I feel like it'll be a little bit darker when it's dry. And it's just my paintbrush, the mixing brush that's scratchy. It should, should look nice and smooth when it's dry. So let's see. So the goddess. Tripura Sundari actually lives in the very center of the yantra, the Bindu. I might add just a drop more of the white. You don't want it to look pastel by any means, but you do want it to cover. Green is one of those interesting colors where it can look streaky. So let's just see. One more bit of white. And then we are going to be good to go. Okay, so I think this is going to be pretty great. It's going to be a medium green. It's going to dry a nice, a little bit bright, I think, on the yantra. So that's going to be a good base for all of the other colors to come. And what kind of brush do we use for the larger area? My suggestion would be to make sure you have a nice point to your paintbrush. See, this looks like it's going to have a good point. So I'll start with one of the corners. The corners are a little more forgiving than the top area. Yeah. 
And the same thing, I'm just going to slowly inch up to the line. I'm certainly not going to start on the line. And don't worry if you go over, something was to come. The beauty of this gouache paint is that you can go over it. All right, and I'm pressing very lightly with my paintbrush. Before I do the next circle, I will definitely get my compass out and redraw this outer circle so I can see it. See, because I'm obliterating it slightly, right, in the process. This outer gate is known as the wheel that enchants the three worlds. So this gold and this yellow and even the green. I'm just coming back here to make sure I get you the right name. The wheel that enchants the three worlds. It's also known as the Bupura and it helps us control disturbing influences. So the outside is really more about disturbing influences that come to the mind and clearing that. There are three bands of color on the outside. There are three gunas and different schools of Tantra actually use different colors for these and even have different orders of gunas. So this is the Harish Johari one I'm doing now. I am, I'm going to redraw this outer, outer circle because see how I have gone over the green a little bit. I figure if I redraw this circle, it'll be easier for me to paint the first band. So the first band is blue. We're going to mix enough of the blue that we can use it a little bit later on because we're going to have the first lot of triangles is also going to be blue. So I'm going to use ultramarine paint. Like I said, I'll be using it again. So a decent amount of ultramarine followed by a little white. I'll put the white on the edge because I don't need too much. And I'm going to get my scrap paper over here. I like to have a surface I can test out the color. Let's see how this blue is looking. I was wondering if my paintbrush was still going to be green. It is a little green, so I'm not going to use that one. You have to use a lot of soap and water to get that green out. So here we go. That's probably enough white. It's really just enough white so that when you cover the paper, it doesn't look really dark, you know, so dark that you can't even see it's blue. And 
the pro tip for doing the circles is not to press too hard with your paintbrush. That is really the only pro tip I have for you right now. And maybe steadying your hand on the piece of paper. So let's see, a tiny bit more. I'm going to see the blue a little bit more. Maybe that's it. So let's try that color. And you have to see, is it going to dry darker or lighter? It's feeling like it might dry a little bit lighter, so that'll be perfect. We are good to go on the blue bands. Here's my mixing brush. I'll do a really good job of cleaning up that green one. It does come out. To begin with, you think it's never going to come out. But just a few goes with soapy water, soapy hot water, and you'll get the color out of the mixing brush. So I'm going to show you a little bit before I go, go time lapse on you, speed it up. One of my children was saying, you really should just do it all real time. Even if it takes 12 hours, some people will want to watch it for 12 hours. I don't know if that's you, if it is, but go ahead and comment in the comments. So I'm starting a little bit away from the edge and then I'll work up to the edge very lightly. And I'll probably go around again and double check from the other side. So I'll start, I'll turn it around and start painting from the other side of the band. Make sure it covers. All right, blue circle, here we come. Now we have the yellow. So the yellow, see in some Tantra, yellow is Tomasic, but I'm pretty sure in this Yantra, it's the Sattvic color. What kind of yellow do we have? It's gonna be a pretty light yellow. It's pretty like the yellow of the gates. So I'm wondering if this is actually gonna be fine for this next band. I think I'll leave that. It's often good to make a new color. So I'm going to go over here and add a little more of the slightly brighter colors. So a little of the lemon. And so the reason I'm doing these colors, in case it's starting to sound strange, is because this is the copy I was taught actually by Heidi. Heidi is one of Harish Johari's probably longest devotees, students, lifelong devotees. She actually still lives in the Johari house in India. She's an elder of ours, elderly German lady. And one day when I was over there, you know, in Tools for Tantra, Dada does teach, Dada is Harish Johari, he does teach the Sri Yantra, but he has one ring around the petals. And then I saw she had a Yantra in her room. And I said, that's interesting, there's three rings. So apparently he used to teach it with three rings. And the more I've been teaching, 
I'm studying actually Sri Vidya. The more I've been studying Sri Vidya, I have noticed that three is really important. So I'm kind of bringing it back, bringing it back into the Sri tradition here. I don't always do it. Okay, so let's have a look at this yellow, see, see how we're getting along. It should be a little bit brighter. I might make it a hair brighter, let's see, with this primary yellow, just a dab of primary. So right now we have a deeper yellow, I think that was cadmium, cadmium. And then I had a little lemon yellow, and now we have primary yellow. I'm trying to make this yellow brighter, and I'm also hoping it's going to cover over any blemishes I have in my blue. Yellow is not a very opaque color. So that's again where I'll put a little white in. A little water, I guess I'll probably end up doing two coats of the yellow just to ensure it covers. Let's see how it's looking. I'm still kind of secretly wishing it was a little bit lighter and brighter. It's a little brighter than the color we have in the gates. All right, so secretly wishing is gonna get me a tiny bit more lemon yellow. This yellow is not meant to be a deep golden, deep, deep golden. So let's see if that brightens it up a bit. Okay, now it looks different to the one next to it. All right, I'm gonna go, go for it. And then I'm gonna be inching up to this blue line. You don't want to, you want to make sure there's not too much water on your brush. So it doesn't suddenly flood the painting. I just rinsed out my brushes. So there's a little extra water from that process. And then let's see, let's see if it's going to cover the blue satisfactorily. It's not really covering it, but it looks fine next to it. So I'm gonna be happy with this. I'll go around twice. And then I'll be back to discuss the red. Once you have your yellow circle, you will be ready for the red one. So the red one is definitely Rajas. Rajas is the quality of passion and enthusiasm. So let's see about our red. I like the primary red. Primary red is a little bit pinky. It looks a little bit dusty here. So we're going to use a little primary red and then today I was thinking of exploring the cadmium red as well. Cadmium red will mean it won't be as pink because I imagine this is just a little bit orange. Let's see. That is definitely a little bit orange. So I'm going to mix those two together and we'll see what kind of color we end up with.
This also, like the blue, will feature late, later on in the yantra. There's going to be a nice red set of triangles. And again, I'm going to look for that white. Probably end up needing a little white. Well, totally yellow, so I'm going to get some more white out. So here's a little white for mixing. Not too much white. That is enough white. I like the color though, and I'm liking this cadmium. So let's see when it's all mixed, how it looks on the piece of paper. This is gonna be our color a few times. It's gonna be our color in the band, and then it's gonna be the color of our eight petals, and then it's gonna be the color of the second group of triangles. So I'm making a decent amount of it. If you're using gouache, this paint is amazing because you can, you can let it dry in the palette and then you just put a little drop of water on the palette and let it seep into the paint to bring it back to life. Don't stir it too soon. Then you can stir it. If you stir it too soon, somehow you end up with chips of paint in your paint. It's not as satisfying. Okay, let's see about this color. All right, so it's a little orangey. I'm liking it. So you're welcome to use a more pinky red or a more orangey red. I am feeling this one. So this one was a mixture of cadmium red and primary red and a tiniest bit of white. Any more white and it would have suddenly become coral or something. So I would not have liked that. So this is working, liking it. Remember, this is gonna be a dominant color in the yantra. And last time with this small brush for now, same brush. Pretty much used this brush a lot so far in the yantra, haven't I? And we're off. I'll switch to time lapse. Now we have our red. Red ring. These rings are quite a lot of focus, aren't they? The three rings. The three rings are the three colors. So for the gunas, you have the blue ring, which is the tamasic color. And that's, that's like the inertia of the material world, the earth. And then you have the sattva, which is the yellow here. And that's the purity of the gods. And then you have it. The red is the activity. So passion, moving towards your spiritual practices. So the three gunas, also three stages of speech. So lots to look at in this yantra. So the next thing is the gold. <clears throat> A little bit different than some of these yantras. We actually have gold behind the yellow here. 
So I will be mixing up some gold. And when we do gold, we actually just add water. We used gold, didn't we, when we did the gate? So you know that. So here we go. Om Shreem. I'm Reem Shreem. Om Shreem Atre Namaha. I'm Reem Shreem. Om Shreem Atre Namaha. Om, I'm Reem Shreem. Om Shreem Atre Namaha. So that mantra can be done with or without the Om, if you're wondering. I'm Reem Shreem, Shreem Atre Namaha. I'm Reem Shreem, Shreem Atre Namaha. All right, Shri. Sometimes it's a greeting in Shri video. We'll say that. Om Shri Matre Namaha. It's like, hi, how are you doing? The Divine Mother is alive and well, and it's all in the Shri Yantra. Didn't you know? Should we celebrate? That's what it means when you say that. So, Om Shri Matre Namaha. It's such a beautiful practice working on this Yantra together. Thank you. So again, I'm just going up to the edge. And I have this piece of paper so that I'm not smudging my drawing, but also just to rest my hands weight on. See if my weight is in the hand, I can be more delicate with my paintbrush. Sometimes when you hold your hand up and you're painting, otherwise it's hard to gauge the amount of weight you're putting in your paintbrush. And as I was saying earlier, having a light touch is really important. Sometimes Harish would take my painting and he would say, he wouldn't say anything, actually. He would just take my painting and start working on it, especially if I was having trouble. And he hardly pressed at all with his paintbrush. It was so interesting to watch, especially if we were actually painting the deities. You know, it's like the eyelashes almost he was painting. Oh, my goodness. Beautiful faces he would do for me on these paintings. It's almost like he just didn't want me to ruin them, you know, with a face that was too heavy-handed so he would take over but I always remember that when I'm doing this kind of thing and just a small space and maybe a nice point and I am sure we are going to be remembering that when we get to the triangles so now we're kind of getting into the yantra right we've done the gold rings we've done the bupur now we're in we're preparing the ground for the 16 petals. Next, we're going to look at the 16 yoginis, outer yoginis, these ones. And these 16 petals, the yoginis, the actually a protective layer around the yantra. In terms of the circuit, it's known as the wish fulfilling chakra. The wish fulfilling chakra. So let's see what happens when we paint that yellow. <laughs> 